Well, good evening, Glue Troopers. I'm back home, and uh, I don't have the lav mic, so I'm going to try and speak up. There were three boxes waiting on me, so I thought I'd crank out a real quick video, and let's just see what's in them. And the first one, I've already opened them. Uh, just let them open, but let's see who they're from. Uh, it is from Rick in South Carolina, and he actually has a box inside a box which says... Uh, Surface only if unable to forward return to center. Okay. Got it nicely packed a box inside a box. <laughs> you guys remember this from the uh, uh, viewers build where no man has gone before. <laughs> Yeah, dinosaur buffet. Hi ho, hi ho. <laughs> oh, that's adorable. In a vicious T Rexian sort of way. Jurassic Park meets the Seven Dwarves. Thank you, Rick. The next one, this is from uh, Mr. Markle in Alamogordo, New Mexico. Let's see. Drone deliveries. And there's an American flag. Uh, I'm leading the history of Holloman Air Power Flight. Okay, during the Holloman Air Shoot. Over White Sands, left echelon turn. And there they are flying their jets. Um. I was flying another QF-4E chase and a combat photographer in the back seat. The aircraft launches a QF-4G with a modified harm missile. Test director thought I was too close. They were worried the modified propellant motor might explode. <laughs> That'll ruin your day. And it kept moving me away and from until the shot in the pick. Uh, the photo got some nice close-ups though prior to the shoot. Almost flying fingertip. Uh, but, uh -huh, but those are not releasable. So we'll say nothing of this here. Max, in close you'll find hopefully three mini tanks, two Herpa Sheridans and an Arsenal 113 APC. And now we're cut up my groove. That's the kind of stuff they had when I was in the Army. Uh, these, in fact, the M113 is the first track I ever got to ride in. Um, and, the, and a Sheridan, before I was even in the Army, was the first uh, tank or armored vehicle I was ever in. Uh, these used to be sold under the Roco brand. The Sheridans are packaged slimmer to Roco release. The 113 is now in kit form. I have the Roco M113 with mortar or with only smaller parts uh, not attached to the vehicle. Sounds similar to Fowler's transition from assembled buildings to kit buildings. Possible as a Cold War cab recce up patrol shoebox type power. I like that idea. I uh, was trying to get some M114s, but uh, they were out of stock. Another potential company history video. That's true. Uh, trip down memory lane for me recreating combat scenes back in the day with friends. Uh, thanks, uh, Glue Trooper uh, John. Glue Trooper from the Land of Enchantment. <laughs> okay. Let's take a look at the Rokos. Or the tanks. Okay, these are kits. And this is the... Uh, oh, this is a BRDM. So, this is a kit of a BRDM. Um, and... That's... The, um, this is the mini tank M113 armored personnel carrier. And uh, you can see the BRDM listed on here, but there it is. And let's see. Um, okay, and here are the Sheridan mini tanks. And as you guys know, the Sheridan was really a reconnaissance vehicle, it had uh, armor. Uh, you know, I'm going to have to send one of these to my brother. And let me tell you why. Uh, you had the the aluminum armor because of the reconnaissance vehicle. After the Army got rid of the M115 at all, they kept, I believe it was eight of them for the 82nd Airborne Division because they were airdroppable. And one of these uh, M551 Sheridans is what my younger brother, who you uh, listened to, he and I, uh, him join me on the show via telephone, uh, this is what he dropped on Operation Just Cause in Panama. He, he dropped a... M551 to the 82nd Airborne Division. Thanks, John. I appreciate it very much. All right. Uh, this is a mortgage tabby up in Canada. 
And Christmas in February. Wow, the Canadians make some serious scotch tape. Wow. All right. G'day, Max. And close is another smorgasbord of modeling kits, a couple of DVDs, and my usual gag gifts. Uh, and he goes through a list of everything. Um, <laughs> Snacks for Godzilla, a set of 1 to 144 armor. Believe your big cheek, he is 1 to 144. Uh, do not feed him after midnight. Uh, four kits for road builds or home builds. A kit of some very famous World War II generals. Uh, and some more Timmies. Well, thank you. Uh, two large no spills holders. Uh, these hold four the Tamiya bottles and are good if you're using more than one type of cement or panel liner uh, on one model at a time. Harder knockover than a bottle and uh, drips fall into the holder. Sweet. Uh, DVD Zeppelin, the one that got away. Franz von Vera. Operation Crossbow, loosely based on the fact that includes the real life Hannah Reich. I remember that. We were seeing that. That's one of those movie things with her flying the uh, V1 that stuck in my head. Uh, Gaggy has two Hot Wheels aircraft and a strange pilot with a jetpack. Take care, stay safe, keep on modeling, catch up with you on the channel. If the glacier does not slide, if Florida the creek does not rise, in the Great White North, it's the glacier slide, orange tabby. Well, let's see here. We have the 172nd scale Hankel HE70. A lot of you guys might recall having seen this airplane in your history books. And uh, you can so you can see the wing of the Hankel 111 in this. And we've got this here. Okay, here are the 1 to 140 scale, 1 to 144 scale vehicles. And since I have that uh, second Godzilla to build for the ship build, I, I'm sure I can make something do with these. Uh, okay, here are the trays he's talking about. MiG-27 flogger. And uh, this is the flogger D. You're not going to believe where the first place I saw one of these things in the real life was. I mean, I'd probably seen one in a museum, but I saw some flying ones at the Wilmington, Delaware airport. Some guy with more money than he knows what to do with had gotten a couple of them. And apparently he flies them once, at least one of them once in a while. I think there's some videos of it on YouTube. Whoops. Careful. Steady lads. Steady. You guys know what movie that's from. Uh, an Academy P-47 Thunderbolt. And this is the bubble top, the bubble top. And F-16, <laughs> uh, also from Academy. And I'm not sure, but I think this may be the only F-16 I've got. I can't let all these airplanes I've got. And the one thing I never did was the most common fighter in the world. And I didn't have it. Or one of the most common fighters in the world. Okay. Uh, oh, man. This, this Hot Wheels plane is right out of Thunderbirds. Except this is not an official Thunderbirds plane. It's, oh, it's an X-Men plane. So Thunderbirds are new. It's X-Men. Uh -huh. Okay. Here we have uh, a Hot Wheels helicopter. And Playmobil, a, sc a Scooby-Doo with a jetpack. <laughs> or is that what he'll be when I'm done with him? <laughs> okay, 140. Oh, please, please have, please have a patent. Please have a patent. 148 scale military miniatures. Yes, patent. I, I tell you, without even reading them, patent Eisenhower, MacArthur. Uh, uh, oh my god, of all the Montgomery and uh, Rommel. I'll tell you that without reading the stuff. Ah, that's great. The reason I need a patent is you guys, when we do the, the Tom Daniel style uh, kit uh, bash sort of thing, when we get around to that build, I'm 
going to convert that half track into Patton's power wagon. And this Patton will, even though he's in 148 scale, he'll give me something to work with to, when I find the correct 135 figure for Patton. He'll give me something to work as a model. Or maybe I can just use a 148 scale character than the 135 and pretend he's got a really big half track. Opportunities. Uh, okay. Uh, these are DVDs. The one that got away. I believe that's the only German to ever escape from Canada. And Zeppelin. Operation Crossbow. Timmy's! Well, guys, thank you very much. Orange Tabby, I appreciate that very, very much. By the way, uh, quick note on the side. The Stenson got home. I pulled it out of its little sandwich egg crate uh, box. Unfortunately, it did bend the tail fin, the, the horizontal stabilizers, but they were able, I was able to bend them back because those old school kits are made of such a heavy, pliable styrene that it's, you know, nothing brittle about it. So, hallelujah for that. Um, I am probably am going to go ahead and do a This Island Earth uh, paint job on it once I get rolling. I was thinking about it on the drive home. It's just, I thought about it the first time. It's just too good of an opportunity to pass up. And uh, I know it's the wrong subtype. The one from This Island Earth was the uh, Stenson 108-1, and this is a 108-2. But I can putty up the rudder trim and sand off the cargo door. I'm not really going to worry about that little bit of dorsal fin. It's just not worth going into it. I know they had different engines of the Franklin on the Dash 2 model. The snout may be a little bit longer, but not so much that I don't want to mess the model up trying to modify it. But uh, I'll, I'll probably go that way. And I'm thinking gloss black coat, clear coat, tape off the windows, maybe the yellow, uh, tape that off, followed by the blue. But anyway, well, guys, thanks for everything. This is wonderful. It's, it's Christmas in, in uh, February, and... Had a busy, busy trip, got stuck in the snow, so I definitely, this is a great thing to come home to. I appreciate it. I'll get out some more content as soon as I can. Got a, a lot of things to do here at the house, uh, but I do have the week off. A lot of commitments during the week, but this channel is one of them. So guys, take care of yourselves, and as always, model on. Nobody saw that. I've got a tripod on this thing. And, and as you can tell, I'm, as we speak, I'm also trying to double, double duty here and do some editing too.